Hello, this is Amanda Verrett from the Office of Instructional Design and Distance Learning at Northern Kentucky University with Mike Lively. This is video three in my eight part tutorial series showing you how to create fully immersive 360 by 360 degree panoramic photographs. In this tutorial, I will show you how to take the series of photographs we took earlier in tutorial one, import them into a program called PTGUI, which will then set control points and then generate an equal rectangular panoramic photograph for us. This program can be found at http colon slash slash www.ptgui.com. So as you can see, I already have the program pulled up here. I'm just going to load our images. Now I'm going to load all of the images except the two original Nader photographs. We're going to leave those out of this processing process and instead I'm going to load in our edited Nader photograph in its place. This is the photograph that we edited in video 2 of the tutorial series. You can see our eight photographs are loaded into the program. So before we continue on I'm going to kind of walk you through the program a little bit. As you can see this is the default setting for the program. Here are our images. I have it just selected on the automatic setting for the camera and the lens parameter. If you uncheck that you can adjust your lens type your focal length, focal length multiplier, etc. You can also do that if you go to this advanced button. This will bring up a number of different tabs, so we'll navigate through them. First tab is that's automatically brought up for us, the project assistant. The second tab is our source images, and it will give you information such as the file name and image size. Third tab is lens settings. This is the same sort of setting adjustments that I showed you just on the project assistant. Depending on the type of lens you use, you may have to do a custom setting, but I would try the automatic setting first. This tab is panoramic setting, so I'll show you later. We can choose a number of different panoramic projections. If you are using a circular fisheye lens instead of a full frame fisheye lens, here is a part of the program where you can crop out the image. You can also do this in Photoshop before importing them into PTGUI. Again, this is an image parameter chart, control point editor, optimizer, preview, and the create panorama tab. But we'll get to all that in time. I'm going to go back to the project assistant and walk you through the process. All right, now the second button we're going to click on is the align images button. PTGUI will automatically generate control points for us and will give us a rough panorama. I'll explain for you quickly what it's doing when it's generating control points. It's taking two photographs that overlap and is finding a pixel in one and trying to find the exact location of that same pixel in the other overlapping photograph, in photograph two. It uses a series of these control points to correctly align the photographs. Of course, the photographs will have to be warped to create the total panorama. All right, now this is the rough photograph, and you can do some adjustments by hand in the panoramic editor. I'll walk you through some of these buttons. Right now it's set on edit the entire panorama, so if I just click and grab, it's going to move all the pieces at once, which isn't too accurate when trying to edit these. So let's put it back with Control z Instead, you might want to try editing individual images. When you click on this button, a series of tabs, come up at the top and this will show you how each photograph is placed within the panorama. If we click on the zero tab you'll see where the first image is placed and so on. You can see the photograph originally rectangular in shape like this one over here is now warped to overlap the control points that the program generated for us. You can also do things such as fit the panorama to the certain size you want, center it, straighten it. Make sure you've clicked on the uh, edit entire panorama button if you're going to attempt to use any of these buttons. But this is again like what I showed you in the advanced settings where you can choose the different types of projections you can generate with the program. What we're doing is a spherical 360 by 180 equal rectangular photograph so just make sure you have that checked and it will look like this. Alright when you're done playing around in there you can X out of that window and we'll go back to the project assistant. Next, I'm going to show you how to generate your own control points manually. To do that, you want to go to the control point assistant. 
All right, first it gives you a quick summary of the control points it automatically generated for you. Your project contains enough control points for a successful stitch. That's the message that you do want to get. You don't always get that message depending on the complexity of your photograph that you've taken, but usually you can go in by hand and kind of rectify whatever problems have popped up. You can also look at the control point table to kind of get an idea of the distance of some of the control points automatically generated for us. Also click on suggestions. As you can see, uh, some of our images that overlap don't have control points. Sometimes you don't ne always need every overlapping image to have common control points, but it helps. So I'm just going to click on any one of these and I'll show you how we can manually set our own control points. Okay, this is the control point editor. We saw this earlier, again, when I was showing you the advanced settings. They give you advice up here. Uh, they explain what you're doing. And they also say as a rule of thumb, provide at least three control points for each pair of overlapping images. I usually try to provide at least five or six, again, just for accuracy in case, you know, you're not dead on. Let's see where we line up in these two photographs. Again, you have the tabs. You can flip through all the different photographs, but five and six do not have some common control points. So let's set a couple for them. I'm going to make sure that jump is clicked. This means that after placing control point, it's going to automatically jump in the other window to where the program guesses the same common control point lives. I'm also going to make sure that auto plus is checked. That's going to attempt to match the control point. Again, very similar to jump. Link links the scroll bars. So if I scroll in this image, it's supposed to scroll in the other image as well. Okay, so now we're going to need to find where the common area of these two photographs is. All right, here's the blue shelf, and there's that blue shelf. I'm assuming that's the same blue end, and it is. So what we're going to do is click in one of the photographs, find a common spot, and try to be as accurate as possible. So I'm going to put it on this corner. And then I'm going to try to find that same spot in this corner. Alright, and then it automatically generates control point zero for you. And you can see all the information in this box down here. Alright, now I'm going to set one on this corner. And on this corner. I'm going to set one on this shelf right here and it's matching the pattern. So see it automatically generated where the second control point should be and you just want to double check and make sure that is correct and that it does line up. Alright, after you do that we can go back to the project assistant and create our panorama. Alright, you can do a number of different settings here. You can set the width and height. I'm just going to set it for the web. I'm going to make a JPEG but you can make any of these file formats. You can make a number of different types of files if you select blended panorama only, it creates a file that is only the blended panorama that we've just created. That means that you will not be able to go back and edit the individual source files separately. You'll only be able to edit the panorama as a whole. If you create individual layers only, it will create a file that will contain your panorama as well as all of the source images that have been warped in layers. So let's say you take one of these files and open it in Photoshop. In your layers palette, you will see all of the original source files in their warped form as they exist within the panorama. So you will be able to click through the layers and edit them individually, and this will affect your panorama as a whole. You can also export blended and layered files, so this will export two panorama files. I'm just going to export our blended panorama only. All right, now I'm going to select where we're going to save our file. I like to save all of my panorama files within the folder I've kept all my original images. That way everything's in the same place. I'm going to name this Library Pano and click Save and Create Panorama. Alright, and that has now created our panorama photograph, so let's view it real quick. And here it is, Library Pano. Alright, now you're ready for the next video tutorial, which is video tutorial 4, using Pano to QTVR. This is another program that will help us to convert our equal rectangular photo into a cubic projection.